auto rental giant Hertz has just invited its former lover Polestar to, well, the second word sounded to me a lot like off, which I took to mean to travel away from, and the first word seemed to imply an intimacy of some sort, only not in a good way. Dude, even if I live to be a hundred, which is unlikely, I know, I doubt that I will ever fully understand the complexities of corporate affairs. I'm Jimmy Logan from AutoExpert.com.au, Newcast Cheap, Australia only, website, come on! Okay, the short version of this story, if you don't mind. Hertz is backing out of its commitment to buy 65,000 incredible pole stars after backing out of its earlier commitment to buy 100,000 Teslas. They're doing this because EVs cost too much to own and too much to operate. EV evangelists are, of course, in full-on denial of such heretical events in spite of the facts and the foundations upon which electric utopia appear to be being built seem to be crumbling. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Cyber threats are very real and we are all exposed to them every day. But you absolutely do not have to be the next victim. You need countermeasures and that's what NordVPN does in the background. You don't need to understand it, you just need the protection. Data encryption, hidden IP address, everything locked down, nice and secure. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Grab the two-year plan at a massive discount, plus four extra months free and an additional surprise gift. I don't know what it is. Let me know if you sign up. nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. You subscribe, you download the app and you connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded and your online traffic is masked with NSA-level encryption across as many as six of your devices. Nord is, of course, the fastest VPN on the planet, and it costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Your location will be masked, and this means you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score great deals on travel and accommodation which are not offered at home. That kind of thing happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Boost your online security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time and that surprise gift. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Thanks very much to Nord for sponsoring this report. The backstory here is kind of important, so here goes. Hertz went on a drug fueled and hyper woke rampage in October of 2021, shortly after emerging from bankruptcy. Their break from reality was so severe that the company promised to buy 100,000 Teslas, like, just like that. An unprecedented media jizz fest ensued and Tesla's market capitalization rocketed up to surpass $1 trillion, American. The knock-on effect of which was to cause the man who says he knows, quote, more about manufacturing than any human being currently alive on Earth, end quote, to strut about the place with a Falcon heavy sized teepee in his trousers, metaphorically, until roughly Christmas of that year. This would normally be a medical emergency, of course, but he is Rocket Man and the Lord moves in mysterious ways. Time goes by inexorably. Hertz discovers inconveniently the Teslas are pretty expensive to keep on the road. That's putting it mildly. A space Karen, at the same time, coincidentally, goes on a Tesla price slashing discount frenzy, which is, of course, the same thing as 
giving your biggest customer hertz a barbed wire enema on the ownership cost front and an enthusiastic flip over the bird for good measure. Therefore, Hertz calls its engagement to Tesla off in January of this year. Rocket Man demands his ring back, so predictably. There's an inverse media gasm orbiting all of this, and EJ suffers a serious anti trouser teepee, which, of course, was just the universe rebalancing itself back to a state of corporate trouser TP equilibrium. Then, one day in between those TP spectrum defining events, after a lengthy online exchange, Hertz found itself in a seedy motel in East LA with former Volvo cheerleader and fake Swedish EV manufacturer, Polestar. Hertz promises to buy 65,000 Polestars, like, would 100,000 Teslas not be enough? Anyway, they promised that. And Polestar is, of course, gagging for it. They're gagging for it. Calling Hertz daddy, etc. Like, you've seen those movies. Polestar is jonesing for a hit of commercial viability because it's teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. And Hertz is a proper freaking sugar daddy with a big fat stack of corporate cash. The deal is 65,000 of those thinly veiled Chinese Geely mobiles over five years for three billion bucks, American. Because Hertz is still suffering the woke delusion of needing to have 25% of its fleet electric by 2025. There's no objective justification for this, of course. It's just another woke corporate fantasy. Just before Christmas of last year, Hertz had already made a total of 13,000 Polestar badged errors of judgment, which is roughly a quarter of Polestar's annual production. Go figure. And on balance, operating 13,000 Polestars was not a pleasant or financially sustainable experience for the rental car giant. So... Next time they get together at the Motel 6 at Redondo Beach or something, Hertz suggests that the couple might want to just back off and put their mad fling on hold. This, of course, goes about as well as conversations of this nature generally do, like... Terrain, terrain. Polestar agrees reductantly, reductantly and reluctantly, both of those agreements were reached, to have future meetings fully clothed, that was part of it, with no further, let's call them, I don't know, exchanges, on the condition that Hertz didn't grass cut them by slutting out its existing fleet of pole stars for a song on the used car market, because if they did that, resale value would crash and dogs and cats would live together. It would be armor friggin' Geddon. There are no plans to restart this attractive tryst, as I understand it, but Polestar is still gagging for it, that's almost certain, and hanging on to the vain hope that the passion might be rekindled in 2025. Now, if you believe that, I have a harbour bridge and an opera house going cheap. They're not everyone's cup of tea, obviously, but hey... To put this Hertz deal in perspective, okay, Polestar sold only about 54,000 cars globally in 2023. So having 65,000 orders on the books in this situation to just one customer is kind of a huge deal for them, especially as they're teetering on the brink of bankruptcy and they can only imagine what a profit might one day look like. This is money in the bank, like until it runs away, and it's not, at least not anymore. Imagine if that one so important customer just runs away, tears up its contract, and goes back to combustion, like, if you make EVs, and they do this at exactly the time that you're casting around for just the Goldilocks rich idiot to part from his money just so you can keep your freaking doors open. There is another rolling micromedia gasm about 
EVs crashing. You've seen those reports, right? Not being the panacea we'd all hoped for, etc. The backdrop here, okay, the massive slowdown in EVs worldwide has seen the likes of Ford and GM, for example, sprint away from their stated enthusiasm for and commitment to electric utopia. Billions of their cash have been poured back into combustion because the research is in and, for example, Jethro, Cletus and Jim Bob just decided that they really, really don't want to roll in a battery F-150. Renault recently canned a proposed stock market float of its EV division because suddenly it's the wrong time. Tesla busily discounting the cars it can build and not building the cars it can't build but says it can, such as the Semi and the Cybertruck, and not developing the successors to the Model S and Model 3 which it desperately needs and running shit-scared about being overtaken by BYD. But hey, they did put a dude in a green jumpsuit pretending to be Optimus, using the high-tech miracle of CGI because, you know, robotics. And Hyundai in North America recently had laid bare its mafia playbook style pricing for EV battery replacements. Do you remember that one? The short version there. An owner drove over, I don't know, something inconvenient and put a scratch on the battery case of his Ionic 5. This snowballs into a $60,000 repair bill Canadian, but hey, 60 grand, roughly equivalent to 60 grand Australian. That's for a replacement battery, but at least it included labour and taxes, and so it would freaking want to for 60 grand, would it not? There's a dealer invoice and another media microgasm. There's some suggestion by Hyundai North America that the price was just some terrible clerical error until a second customer comes forward and presents exactly the same price on an invoice for a similar problem in his Ionic 5. The battery replacement was 5,000 bucks more Canadian than the 2022 vehicle itself was worth. So it was written off, understandably, well before it could have made a dent on global warming. Essentially, the battery in an Ionic 5 seems to be a $60,000 unserviceable, unrepairable component jam-packed with toxic shit. So, yay. This is what Electric Utopia actually smells like. Polestar is currently desperate for about 1.3 billion bucks, American, in new investment funding. And they need that just to stay afloat, right? Only, go figure, when they have a cheeky little look around, every likely candidate appears to be playing pass the frickin' parcel. Polestar CEO Thomas Ingenlath clearly has his head in a vice today, but that's why they pay him the big bucks. And in any case, I have absolutely no sympathy because his relationship with the truth, in my opinion, seems pretty negotiable, let's call it. He recently told Fortune that talks with people gagging to shovel money into his enticing China-Swedish black hole were, quote, well advanced, which could mean basically anything, right? But he gave absolutely no details, so that seems like just a bit of corporate spin to me. And in the same report, he said that, quote, we have successfully ramped up production and started sales in China, Europe and Australia of Polestar 4. Now, I can't speak for China and Europe, but here in Shitsville, all Polestar can do if you are sufficiently self-deluded and you want to buy a Polestar for now, like today, because sales have, quote, started, is they can take your deposit and tell you to wait for some non-specific period of months and give you a sort of vaguely indicative price. 
According to them, they cannot show you a physical pole star for in the flesh, on shore, in a showroom until the second quarter of this year. And you will not be able to test drive a Polestar 4 until the second half of this year, which could mean Christmas fucking Eve at the earliest. Deliveries, they say, will not be until the second half either. Perhaps just in time for 2025. If that's we've successfully started sales in Australia, then okay, dude. But to me, this is not a sale. This is not on sale. It's not selling a car. This is just a prick tease of maybe selling a car a little later, which to me is the wonder bra of selling a car. Like you slap down the cash and you open the clasp and then you just wonder where the fucking car is. It's taking an order at best after an expression of interest by you. A sale is pretty clearly where there is a meaningful bilateral exchange, like funds in exchange for a product. And this is not that. This is a, we might be able to sell this to you before Christmas if we are not bankrupt in the meantime and if production doesn't fall over. Imagine buying other stuff this way, for example, a, uh, a massage. You decide that you need a massage, like, mm, mm. fair enough, dude. Modern life, like so much tension. And you're working from home today anyway, so approved. The, um, let's call it studio, says, certainly, sir. Head in the clouds massage, that's what we do, among other things. And we're now open, dude. And then they tell you that they can have a room for you ready in perhaps three months. And they'll probably be able to let you inspect it and meet the um, therapist sometime in spring. And she'll be ready and willing to relieve your tension just before Christmas, probably, you know. Subject to zoning approval. But hey, they're open for business. They've started selling massages. Shit, yeah. Polestar is so concerned about crashing EV resale values and the huge disincentive to owning one that this would represent in the market generally that it convinced its former lover, Hertz, to give it the right of first refusal on Hertz's fleet of pole stars when Hertz wants to dispose of them. And Hertz has graciously agreed to keep them on the fleet for at least a year. Now, as Chrissy Amphlett so poignantly pointed out, there's a fine, fine line between pleasure and pain. I think we can all agree on that. And I would argue that having a pole star for a friggin' year is well over that line. So this means a quasi-bankrupt fake Swedish EV manufacturer could burn even more cash that it does not have by hoovering up Hertz's sloppy seconds at great expense if it deems it necessary to do so to avoid a glut of used pole stars entering the market and trashing resale values across the market and getting all kinds of hapless first adopters up in arms, screaming, never again, kind of thing, ad nauseum on social media, etc., just when they need the Goldilocks rich idiot to come along and presume that Polestar is a great investment. You have to remember that the problem here is not Hertz and it's not Polestar. The crux of this problem is simple. It's EVs being too expensive to own. Because if a brick bounces out of a tradies ute, you zig when you should have freaking zagged, they're going to send you a bill for 60,000 bucks. If a giant company like Hertz, with all of its incredible resources and its tremendous bargaining power, cannot make EV ownership work commercially, what hope do you have as an individual paying the full freight for everything 
and keeping the vehicle for substantially longer than any rental car company ever would. And in that way, it's going to exsanguinate itself on you even further. Hertz has thus just done you an incredible favour, dude. They jumped into bed with Tesla and Polestar so that you don't have to. They've run the mad expensive experiment for you. And the data is in. And it's unfucking equivocal, I would argue. Of course, an insufferable pro EV nut job worshipping at the altar of electric Jesus and on the fast track to electric utopia is going to dismiss all of this as merely EV hating heresy. And of course, the cool thing about quasi religious beliefs, some would call them delusions, is that they're so liberating. If you believe, the facts really don't matter, at least not to you. But from where I sit, shoveling your personal cash into EV ownership and hoping for the best, doing the right thing, saving the planet, whatever rhetoric you are subscribing to, all of this is objectively a financial commercial mistake. <laughs>